This episode of HD Nation is made possible by Belkin. Unleash your network. For those of you who have been following the epic saga of Robert Heron's home theater, <laughs> PC, C, C, C. When we last checked in, he was doing battle with Comcast. And when I say battle, I just mean waiting for the tech to show up and activate his new cable card for a Seton Infinity TV TV in seat. Oh, I, you know. Seton. Seton. Infinity TV 4. Which is blah, blah, basically blah. allowing you to record four channels of digital cable simultaneously yeah. on your home theater PC. That I'm doing. You've been waiting for this thing for like a year. It took a while to get it in. Apparently, I, I picked the one vendor who apparently was the most flooded with requests for the product, so it took uh. some time doing. And then they had to get the cable guy to come over and properly light it up for me. And now you haven't touched your TiVo in like three weeks? I, I, I am pretty damn close to Video Nirvana. It, it has been about two weeks now since I disconnected the TiVo, and I still leave it plugged in so it gets its updates and stays working. But uh, <laughs> I have made the switch over to my home theater PC running Windows 7. And uh, I, I got to say, the ability to four, record four channels at once is awesome. Uh, not so much for the fact that I actually need to record four channels right. at once, but... Uh, for those times when I have, say, two recordings going on at once, I can enjoy another live channel, uh, which is something that used to just bug the crap out of me with my TiVo. Like, I, I have my season passes rolling away on, right. say, two separate shows, and there's only two tuners. Oh, but the, the football game's on that night, and, and I have to either stop a recording or something. This just eliminates that. Did you know you're supposed to buy a second TiVo and stack that up on top of the yeah. first one? I'd rather, well, I want my TiVo just record <laughs> two, more, two more streams and uh, anyway, get it all day. I'm also enjoying Windows 7's, uh, Windows Media Center's mm -hmm. HD interface that's built into Windows 7. This is basically what's driving my home theater software and the hardware, uh, basically using that interface. It's just built right into Windows. I love the thumbnails next to my recorded programs. Uh, the channel guide list is updated for free. Now, that's really a big impetus for this whole thing. And it has some nice search sort features, like if I only want to see HD programs. In the two weeks I've been using it, it did miss one recording the other day, and I'm not really sure why that happened. I was tweaking some stuff around. Could that have been sort of the legendary ability in theory of, of, of broadcasters being able to put a flag on their programming that Windows Media Center would honor and refuse to record? I had that happen when I was trying to record a uh, an American football game recently, right. and every 15 minutes it pop up saying, oh, we can't record this, but it would record about 15 minutes and then stop, and then I could always start it up again. So it was kind of bizarre, but it's rare. I don't see too many shows with those kind of restrictions on them. Uh, the next step for me really is... Before we get to the next step, though, oh, okay. I, I, there's a couple things we should talk about. One, you, a, one of the things you said is you really like the... Windows Media Center interface, and we've, we've enjoyed it. Tighter Blu-ray integration would be nice, right? Um, True, you have to go with a third-party piece of software, but the software will integrate, or at least the three main packages I'm aware of, the, right. the big ones out there, they'll integrate into Windows Media Center itself. Are you still so, using Platinum at home? Yeah. Total Media, I'd say Total Media Theater Extreme Platinum Super they're, Edition. I have their Platinum Edition, right. which includes basically the, the full package gives you a nice software up converter for mm -hmm. DVDs, which yeah. can look really good, actually. Uh, but I end up, I, I started off with version 3 of the software, and now they have version 5 out for 3D support, right. which I haven't upgraded to yet. But it, the software's 100 bucks, so right. for that Platinum version. So that wasn't, that's a, it starts to add up when you start putting all the software packages together. Well, the software seemed for a running lot cheaper the way you want. when Blu-ray players were like five or $800. And now that they're 100 bucks and you get them with a box of popcorn at Walmart, that's not seeming like such a bargain. Pretty amazing. How do you feel about, you've been running all of this on top of an Atom, processor with the NVIDIA ION GPU, how's it holding up? Because that, the reason I said in the opening that the almost ultimate home theaters, totally. you've been making noises about building a more powerful system. Definitely, for what I'm doing, mm -hmm. uh, for single task stuff, even up to recording four channels right. at once, it's been solid. It, it really, it, it, no perceivable slowdowns or lag, mm -hmm. but it's when I start to try to do other things on top of that. Like say <laughs> I have three or four recordings going on at once and I want to stream a Blu-ray movie in right. and Blah, blah, blah. It can start to get, the menus start to slow down a bit, but I'm not like sacrificing quality of recordings or performance. It, it, it seems to, Windows Media Center seems to always say, you know what, we're going to make sure the video gets recorded properly, right. and then we'll, make, then we'll take care of everything else. So That's for that, thing. I'm pretty good. Coming up with ways of controlling stuff, though, is the other thing I'm working on right now. Um, I'm using mostly Bluetooth devices, mm -hmm. and I love it. And I'm also using a nice app on my phone from Hippo Remote. 
uh, for that provides basically a Windows Media Center control, a Windows 7 control. Actually, it'll also work with uh, Apple computers or Linux platforms. Pretty much anything you can install nice. the little software package that goes mm -hmm. on the computer part. And then that allows me to tunnel right in over my Wi-Fi network and control very nicely uh, all of the software I'm using. So no latency issues? No. None. Actually, this is the best remote. My $700 smartphone is an awesome remote <laughs> control. <laughs> and, and the next part I'm messing with, and the reason you were, uh, I was talking about upgrading the CPU is for, basically I found a great app called Remote Potato that one of the you viewers... You want to stream everything you've recorded to your phone, don't you? Remote Potato <laughs> allows me to tunnel right into my home theater PC, mm -hmm. look at all my recordings, schedule recordings, look at the channel guide, start recording, and supposedly before the end of the year, I'll be able to then stream that content directly to my phone because Silverlight support currently isn't on the iPhone or on an Android platform. That's the problem I'm running into. And encoding, there's no really... there's no. There's no GPU accelerated encoding that I'm seeing so far, at least, with my Silverlight software that I'm using for Remote Potato. So I have to usually select the lowest quality output when I'm streaming on the internet to, say, a computer. So, But if I had a faster CPU, I could bump up the quality, probably to full quality. And this is going to be really nice. So basically, anywhere in the world I am, as long as I can have internet access at decent broadband speeds, right. I'll be able to pull any of that content or start content. Like, say I'm away and like, oh, I forgot to record the game. Start recording the game, and then a couple seconds later, I can start watching it. And uh, this makes me happy. So home theater PC <laughs> is your ultimate set-top box. So far. So and, far. you know, it's got all the standard stuff, too, for, like, Netflix. And I could add. A, the one thing I probably couldn't get is Voodoo. I don't think Voodoo makes a PC app yet. but You can run Voodoo on will. a home theater PC oh. using Boxy, dot, dot, dot. But oh. you can't run the HDX quality nah. stuff on the... On, on the PC-based version of Boxy, only on the Boxy hardware. But i got to say, I'm satisfied, because this is also integrating all my music, my, my streaming nice. uh, movie collection, mm -hmm. all of it just coming into one box now on top of the TV service. And, uh, and it doesn't cost me anything other than the, the cost of a cable card, one cable card. Which and the is cost really nice. of the hardware you built up. That and the cable TV subscription and building the hardware. How, how but much was that Seton card? That Seton tuner is four hundred dollars, okay. and that's the single most expensive part in my computer. So, so it's probably you probably have about thousand dollars. I think up in this thing right I think now. it could separate. It. The card is four hundred bucks, and the rest of the computer could be four hundred bucks. <laughs> so it's like it's <laughs> or there is a little an, outlay. An older, a, a not an old, a two, three, four year old PC with a decent, relatively recent GPU could actually replace. You could you could actually recycle an old PC. And, totally, and pretty easy totally. And the, uh, we originally I originally built this whole system for its efficiency mm -hmm. and compact size. So those were the two overriding right. characteristics I wanted on the system. So I ended up sacrificing a little bit on the CPU side. But I was assuming that GPU acceleration would be everywhere. But apparently, it's it's taking its time <laughs> to be deployed in every nook and, nook and cranny. But for the Flash stuff, it's great. But it just so happens that one app right. I'm using, Remote Potato. I think it's RemotePotato.com. You, you can Google it. That's a Silverlight-based application, but it's so neat. Just wherever I am, it's like, oh, I forgot to record something. Oh, I like doing that. Kind of like, kind of like what Sling does, except this is all free software. It makes him happy. <laughs> Time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of December 7th, 2010. First up, Inception. The Dark Knight director Christopher Nolan brings us this trippy film about dreams and the subconscious. Inspired by movies like The Matrix, Dark City, and Memento, Nolan began working on the script nearly 10 years before the film's eventual release in theaters. This release is also available as a limited edition briefcase gift set exclusively from the WB shop, but it seems they've sold out already through pre-orders and they say no more will be available. Ugh. So we've missed the boat on that one, but you can still get the regular Blu-ray release which comes with a DVD and a digital copy as well. Speaking of surreal, next up is the Criterion Collection's Videodrome. From director David Cronenberg, this film takes place in Toronto in the mid-80s and tells the story of a cable station CEO who finds a broadcast signal that does crazy messed up things to everyone who watches it. Rotten Tomatoes described it as visually audacious, disorienting, and just plain weird. So if you're in the mood for a mind trip and you somehow missed it until now, check it out. Last year there were rumors swirling of a potential remake, but it's been a good 18 months since that news with no other updates, so take it with a grain of salt. Also released this week, Rush Hour. We've already seen Rush Hour 3 on Blu-ray, and while Rush Hour 2 is nowhere to be seen, this week sees the release of the original. This 1998 buddy cop film follows two polar opposites who have to work together to solve crimes. While the plot isn't exactly original, Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker make this a fun film to watch regardless. This Blu-ray release includes some additional scenes, music videos, and director Brett Ratner's student film from NYU titled Whatever Happened to Mason Reese from 1990. Other releases this week include 
the 2010 World Series film, Texas Rangers vs. San Francisco Giants. Barry Monday, Across the Line, The Exodus of Charlie Wright, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland has been available on 3D with Sony TVs, and now it's being released on its own. Attack on Pearl Harbor, 70th commemorative edition, Beyonce, I Am World Tour, the Criterion Collection's Kronos, Harpoon, Whale Watching Massacre, uh, pardon my French, but Legame, Lost in Translation, Mademoiselle Chambon, Nature, Echo, An Elephant to Remember from PBS, Shrek Forever After, Blu-ray only, Shrek Forever After, Blu-ray plus a DVD, Shrek, The Whole Story, all four movies together in a box set, the year of getting to know us. And on Saturday, December 4th, we saw a few Twilight-related releases. Music from the Twilight Saga, Videos and Performances Volume 1, the Twilight Saga Eclipse Combo Pack, and the Twilight Saga Eclipse Movie Only Edition. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Belkin. Belkin's Play N600 wireless router has the power to stream HD video seamlessly to all your devices anywhere in your home. The Play N600 does more than connect your devices, it makes them better. Game systems turn into media players. Printers print without wires. Hard drives become wireless servers. It even finishes downloading large files to a hard drive at home after you've shut down your computer or taken it with you. Learn more at belkum.com unleash.